Okay, so now that we've finished up ionic bonding, we're going to move into these other type that we're going to learn about, which is covalent bonding, um, which is AKA molecular bonding. So you can also call it molecular bonding, and that's because a molecule is made of two nonmetals, which is also what a covalent bond consists of. So right here, it's a bond between two or more nonmetals. So typically, what charges is that going to be? Negative. Two negatives. So you might want to add that in just for yourself. So that's going to be two negative charges. Now there's an exception, and I've talked about it several times. What's a, no, um, a non-metal that has a positive charge? Hydrogen. hydrogen. So there's an exception there, and that's hydrogen with that positive charge. All the other non-metals have negative charges. So this one has a weaker bond than ionic, because now we have two negatives, and when I put two negatives together, they're gonna actually repel each other. So there's not that attraction between them, so it's a weaker bond. It's not as strong as ionic. So coming down here, it's gonna have a lower melting and boiling point. It's not gonna take as much energy to break apart that bond. All right, and key word right here, we're no longer transferring electrons. All right, whereas before, the metal was a positive charge. It wanted to lose electrons. The non-metal was negative, it wanted to gain. So it was perfect, we just transferred them. Now, we have two nonmetals. Electrons, they both want to gain them. So we're not going to transfer them. They're going to share them. So I have four. Michael has four. How can we get to eight? We share. So I share my four with Michael. Michael shares his four with me. Now we both have eight together. So that's how covalent bonding happens. We share electrons. Instead of me needing to lose some and Michael needing to gain some, so I give mine away and he takes them. That's ionic. Now they're gonna share electrons. So it's a different type of bonding because of what's happening with the electrons. So it results from sharing electrons to reach the octet rule, okay? So what's the exception to the octet rule? Hydrogen, it's an exception to a lot of things. It doesn't want eight electrons because that's what the octet rule says. Everything wants eight valence electrons. Hydrogen only has that first energy level. So how many electrons fill that first energy level? Two. two. So hydrogen only wants two. So it has one, it wants to share one back to have a total of two. Good? Good with this one? All right, so there's two types of covalent bonds. The first one is a nonpolar covalent bond. Nonpolar. All right, so a nonpolar polar covalent bond is a covalent bond in which the bonding electrons are Is there not a blank there? Yeah. I don't know why that blank is right. Oh my goodness. Oh no. I was gonna say there's why is that there? Our shared oh, I already have the blanks on here. Oh, that's why I'm confused. Shared equally. There we go. Should be shared equally. My blanks are already on there. Oh. Yeah, I guess I already typed them in. Because I teach this online too to my uh, student that is at home, so I probably typed it in for him. All right, so a covalent bond in which the bonding electrons are shared equally.
Electronegativity values. Electronegativity, if you want to add, is the ability to attract an electron. That's what electronegativity is. The ability to attract an electron. So it, if it has a high electronegativity, it really wants to attract an electron. If it has a low electronegativity, it does not want to attract electrons. So the most electronegative element on here is what? Well, has the highest number? Fluorine. fluorine. So fluorine is the most electronegative element on the periodic table. And so there's trends on the periodic table, so I always remember it as as you get closer to fluorine, since that's the most electronegative, then you're going to be more electronegative, which we know the nonmetals want to gain electrons. So it makes sense that they would have a greater ability to attract electrons, all the nonmetals over there by fluorine. All right, so if I have two oxygens, their value is 3.5. They have the exact same ability to attract electrons, so they're going to share those electrons equally. All right, but in my example down here, so polar is when they are different. So this means different. Think about it. We have a north pole and a south pole. Are they different? Yeah. Yep, one is north, one is south. They're different. All right, so a covalent bond in which the bonding electrons are not shared equally, resulting in partial charges, partial negative and positive charges. So now I have hydrogen with its one valence electron bonding to iodine. It's in group 17. So how many does it have? Seven. So I'm going to put one in the bond with hydrogen. So it has its two. It's good. 
and then iodine still has seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now iodine has two, four, six, eight. So it's reached octet rule. So there's my structure for HI. So now hydrogen has a value of 2.1. Iodine has a value of 2.5. Which one has a stronger pull towards the electrons? Iodine. iodine. So these electrons are no longer shared equally. Iodine, even though they're sharing them, iodine has a stronger pull. All right, so that means that iodine is going to have a partial charge of negative, and this is a delta symbol. All right, and hydrogen has a partial charge of positive because now the electrons are closer over here, and electrons have what charge? Negative. So this has a partial negative charge. This has a partial positive charge. Now you're never going to have to write partial charges until you get to college. I remember writing lots of partial charges in college, all right? But do you understand how it gets a partial charge? Because the electrons are being pulled closer to here. And so if the electrons are more over here and electrons have a negative charge, that's how I get a more negative charge here, leaving my other side with what charge? If it has lost the negative, what's it left with? Positive. A positive charge. So that's how you can get partial charges. Regardless, they're still sharing electrons, they're just not sharing them equally. So typically, if you have two different elements sharing electrons, it's really rare that they're gonna share them equally. Now we'll talk tomorrow about how the shape of our structure can also determine polarity, whether it's polar or nonpolar. Whether we have a polar bond or a whole polar molecule. Okay, we'll talk about that tomorrow when we talk about Vesper theory. Okay? So we have nonpolar molecules where the electrons are shared equally. We have polar where they're not shared equally. Don't confuse the non and think not equal. Don't confuse that. Nonpolars equal. Polars not equal. The not goes with the opposite. Nonpolar equal. Polar not equal. Okay? We good here? All right, keep going. All right, so there are three types of bonds that we can form, which is on the back. And hold on. I hate how they're going in. I should have here in the later. is a single bond that we can form. So that's when one electron is shared by each atom. So I have one, Blake has one. How many total is being shared between us? Two. So two total electrons are being shared. So we can represent that with two dots, but we're going to connect them and make one dash. So our example is going to be two fluorine atoms or a diatomic fluorine. Remember our diatomic elements? What's the acronym for them? Diatomic, there's seven of them. It sounds German. Well, I think it does. Judith thinks it does. Starts with a BR, ends with Hoff. Yes, Leia Brinkelhoff. Good, Brinkelhoff. If you were in the other class, you may have never heard that, but, you know. We were in the other class. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. In, the other in the other class. I talk about it a lot, so. Brinkelhoff, you remember hearing that? Brinkelhoff, the diatomic elements. There's seven of them. They make a seven on the periodic table with the exception of hydrogen, because um, hydrogen's always an exception. Anyways, we'll, we'll get to that later. All right, so two fluorine atoms put together. So we have F and F, two Fs. This is not sweet enough. Sure. I like coffee with my creamer. All right. Okay, so fluorine is in group 17. How many valence electrons? 
So we always start with putting one in the middle. All right, now I'm gonna put the rest on the outside. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'm gonna mirror that for the other fluorine. So one in the middle, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Josh, you wanna come teach this? All right, then get off your phone. All right, so questions on how I formed that single bond. <laughs> two electrons in the middle. Now, does this fluorine now have eight? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two, four, six, and remember it's sharing now, so it has both of these. And does this fluorine have eight? Yeah. Yes. Yes, so you always need to check at the end. Do all my atoms have eight besides which one? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. It only wants how many? Mm -hmm. Two. So that's how we would form a single bond. All right, so the next type of bond is a double bond. So that's when two electrons, that's supposed to be an E. That doesn't look much All right, two electrons are shared by each atom. So I have two, Jerrica has two. How many total are being shared? Four. Four, four total electrons are shared. So that can be represented with four dots or how many dashes? Two, two. two dashes. And these are shorter and stronger than a single bond. So how we form these is if a lone electron is left on two atoms that are side by side. Remember, lone electrons are what makes our atoms unstable. So we're going to bring them together to form a bond between those two atoms. We bring them together. So like with those oxygens, I did it really fast before, so let's do it slower this time. So oxygens in group 16, how many valence electrons? Six. Six. So just like up here, we only start with one in the center because that's where we intend on making our bond is in the center. Then we put the rest on the outside. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I mirror the same thing for the other side. So one in the middle, and I'm gonna go ahead and make that bond. Two, three, four, five, six. So now I have lone electrons down here. This is what's causing my atom to be unstable. And right now, how many electrons does oxygen have? Seven, once eight. Okay, so if I have lone electrons left on atoms that are side by side, so these two oxygens, lone electrons, I can bring them together. So I'm gonna bring these two together. And when I do that, it makes another dash between my oxygens. So I redraw it as two dashes. Now, can I just redraw it like this? No, what do I need to include? The dots, right? Because this would only show four valence electrons. So I have to make sure and include my lone pairs. So now I have two, four, six, eight for both of my oxygens, two, four, six, eight. So that's how you would form a double bond. When you have one leftover electron on two atoms that are side by side, you bring them together to make one more bond. Questions on that one? All right, and the last one is a triple bond. So a triple bond is when you have three electrons shared by each atom. So I have three, Zach has three. How many total are we sharing? Six, six total electrons are being shared. So we can represent that with six dots or how many dashes? Three, three. almost right, six. Three dashes. So these are shorter and stronger than a double bond, they're the strongest. So think about it like this. Let's say I did karate, all right? And I have one single piece of wood that I'm gonna ninja chop through, okay? One single piece of wood versus half that length, but two pieces of wood versus half that length, but three pieces of wood. Which one would be the easiest to ninja chop through? The one single long wood, right? So a single bond is the easiest, it's the longest, but it's also the easiest to break through versus the double, which is half that length, 
but stronger versus a triple have that length but three times okay so think about it that way all right my example is in two i have two nitrogens bonded together and nitrogen is in group 15 how many valence electrons okay. five so one in the center two Two, three, four, five. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing over here. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, so this time, how many lone electrons do I have on each atom? Two. 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 So I could bring, and y'all don't, they don't have to be side by side. Like I don't, I could have bring this one to there and this one to here. As long as you have lone electrons on these two atoms, you can bring them together. So this would form a dash, this would form a dash. So now I have three dashes between, and what do I need to bring to my new drawing? Your yep, the lone pair on top. So now I have two, four, six, eight electrons for each nitrogen. Questions? Yes? Do they have to do the same uh, element? Nope, we're about to do different elements here in a second, and more than just two. This is just how we form the bonds. Now we're about to do Lewis structures. So any questions on single, double, or triple bonds? Good? All right, so Lewis structures. This is what you're gonna be doing today. You're gonna be drawing Lewis structures. You know, I've never had a Lewis in class, never. Not in 12 years of teaching have I had a student named Lewis. Never, all right. Anyways, one day maybe I will. All right, so Lewis structures is named after someone with the last name Lewis. Um, but basically, these are what you draw for covalent bonds, all right? Because we're going to draw the structure of these molecules. Remember, they're called molecules because they, are, they consist of covalent bonds. And um, so here's some helpful hints for you. All right, so number one, you need to find the central atom. What does central mean? The center. So this means that only one of your atoms in your compound can go in the center. You need to figure out which one it is. So here's a hint for you. Is carbon in your compound? Because if carbon is in your compound, it's definitely gonna be your central atom. So yes, central. Carbon is there, put it in the center. It's gonna be your central. If you got two carbons, put them both in the center. They're both gonna be your central. That's why there's a whole branch of chemistry based on carbon. What is it called? Hmm? Starts with an O. Organic. Organic, yes, organic chemistry because there are these huge carbon chain compounds where you have all these carbons in the center. All right, so carbon is a great central compound. Anyone know why? Think about how many lone electrons it has in its um, electron dot structure. It's in group 14. It has, four. it has four, so it's perfect. It can make four bonds, one on each side. So it's a great central atom. All right, next one. Is hydrogen in your compound? Because if it is, do not stick it in the center. Because it's a horrible central compound. Why do you think? It only, has it only has one valence electron. It can only make one bond. Why would you put it in the middle? That would be a hor horrible central atom. Don't put that in the center. All right, the next helpful hint is to use common sense, which I know some of you don't have, so I'll give you the technical definition in a second. But here's the common sense. Here's what I'm talking about. If you have a formula like PF3, which would make more sense? Should I put the one phosphorus in the center with the three fluorines around it, or should I put one of the fluorines in the center with a phosphorus coming off and two fluorines coming off? Which would make more sense? Probably the one phosphorus, right? Because there's only one of them. And then put the three fluorines around it. That just makes more sense. So that's what I mean by use common sense. But sometimes you can't do that. Or maybe you lack that. All right? So 
use the element further from F. And what that means is it's the least electronegative element. So if you just find the one that's further from fluorine on the periodic table, put that one in the center. That one will be a better central atom. And I have an example of that that we'll do. Okay, so there's my helpful hints. <clears throat> all right, so there's step one. Step two is to place all other atoms around the central using electron dot structures. So we're going to be using those electron dot structures to form these single, double, or triple bonds between our atoms to make our Lewis structures. Ready for some examples? All right, first one, NH3. Uh, using common sense, which one should we put in the middle? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. Which element do we know should never go in the center? Hydrogen, Hydrogen okay? So we're going to start with nitrogen. And nitrogen is in group 15, so how many valence electrons? Five. So start there. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, now we have three hydrogens to place. Where do you think we should put them? Three yeah, on the three lone electrons. Because remember, lone pairs are good. We don't mess with those. So we're going to put our three hydrogens on our three lone electrons. Why is my board being so touchy today? All right, so I'm going to put a hydrogen here. And hydrogen's in group one, so how many valence electrons? One. one. So one here, there's a bond. Hydrogen here, one there, there's a bond. And hydrogen here, one there, there's a bond. So now, how many valence electrons do each of my hydrogens have? Two. Two total, right, which that's how many they want. And my nitrogen has a total of how many? Eight. And that's how many it wants. So always at the end, check your structure and make sure everything has the correct amount of valence electrons. Any questions on ammonia, NH3? Very close to ammonium, which is one of your polyatomic ions. Take off one of these electrons, boop, add a plus one charge, put our fourth hydrogen right there. All right, let's do Si2H6. All right, what do we know is not going to go in the center? Okay. Hydrogen. Hydrogen, right? Hydrogen is not going to go in the center. But I have two SIs, so I can't put just one of them in the center, so I'm going to put both of them in the center. So SI, SI. And I'm going to start by putting their electron dot structures and connecting them together. So silicone's in group 14. How many valence electrons? Four. Four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, so now how many lone electrons do I have? Six total, right? And how many hydrogens do I have to place? Six. Six. So it just makes sense. I'm going to put one hydrogen on each of my lone electrons. So hydrogen there, here, here. So now, do each of our hydrogens have a total of two? Yep. And do my silicones, do each one of those have their total of eight? Yeah. Yep. So we're good. So far, we've made single bonds. Any questions? Good. Have you all done this before? Back when I taught freshmen, I did this with freshmen, so I don't know if y'all did that as freshmen. 
All right, next one. H-S-I-P. What do we know is definitely not going in the center? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. But now, I have one silicone and one phosphorus, so I can't use common sense. There's one of each. So we're going to use that rule of pick the one that's further from fluorine. Which one's further from fluorine? Silicone or phosphorus? Silicone. Silicone. So we're going to put that one in the center. So silicone is going in the center. And silicone, we said, had how many valence electrons? Four. four. So one, two, three, four. All right, so let's see here. Jalen, over here. Where do you want to put hydrogen? It doesn't matter. Pick a spot. Top, bottom, left, or right? Left. Left? All right, so hydrogen's going over here, and it has one valence electron. So hydrogen's done. We're done with hydrogen. All right, other Jalen. Where do you want to put phosphorus? Top. Top? All right, so I'm going to change my font color here. Phosphorus is going up here, and phosphorus is in group 15. How many valence electrons? Five. Five. So, let's see here. One in the bond, and then two, three, four, five. I'm going to double that one. All right, so that's what we got. So I have two leftover ones on phosphorus, two leftover ones on silicone. What can I do? Connect them, right? Can I bring these two to these two? And when I do that, what type of bond am I going to form right here between phosphorus and silicone? Double. Not double, because I already have one. Triple, right? Because I am I have one, and then I'm going to make another, and then I'm going to make another. So it would be a triple bond. So I'm going to bring these two and these two. I know you can't see that line there. So I'm going to redraw it as H bonded to SI and then triple bonded to phosphorus with a lone pair on phosphorus. So now, does hydrogen have two? Yes. Yep. Does silicone have eight? Yep. And does phosphorus have eight? Yep. So that's how we would form a multiple bond when you have those leftover electrons. As long as they're on atoms that are already connected, then we can go ahead and bring them together. Now let's just pretend like there was an electron over here on hydrogen. Could I connect hydrogen to phosphorus? No. No, because those are not already connected. So I couldn't form a bond out of nowhere. They have to already be connected. Technically, I could make this a line. We just chose to put it on top, which you can do. All right, tomorrow we'll talk about how these should actually be shaped. <laughs> Any questions on those? I think I have one more. <laughs> All right, last one. C S B R two. Yes, Lynn. Mm -hmm. So which element should definitely go in the center because it's in our formula? Carbon. carbon. Yes. When carbon is there, it should always go in the center. So I have carbon. And carbons in group 14, how many valence electrons? Four. four. So one, two, three, four. All right, so let's see here. Paxton, where do you want to put sulfur? Uh, just on top. Top? Yeah. So sulfur up here. And sulfur's in group 16, how many valence electrons? Six. Six. So one in the bond. Two, three, four, five, six. So I've got one left over one up there that we'll deal with later. All right, now I have two bromines, two bromines. So Adriana, where do you want to put them? Now remember, they have to go on our central, so I can't put a bromine up here on sulfur. All the atoms have to attach to the central. So where would I put, where could I put bromine? On the bottom. All right, so bromine down here, and where's the other one gonna go? On the left. On the left, bromine over here. All right, and bromine's in group 17. How many valence electrons? Seven. Seven, so one in the bond. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then same thing down here. So our bromines are good, right? They have their eight. But I have a leftover one on carbon and a leftover one on sulfur. So what do I do? Connect them. Connect them. Now when you do this, here's your options. Let's say you got to this point on your paper. You can erase and make another dash. Okay? That's one option. 
Or you can do, oh, I'm gonna bring those together and I'm going to redraw. Don't leave it like this. It needs to be a dash between, okay? So either erase your dots and say, okay, I'm gonna make that a dash, or connect them and say, I'm gonna redraw it. That's your two options. So I've got C, S, and it's double bonded now, two dots there. Bromine has three lone pairs, and bromine down here, three lone pairs. The only difference was I changed that into a little dash. So you can either just erase your dots and not redraw it, or redraw it. It's up to you. Just don't leave it like this. Let's say it was worth five points, I would do minus two redraw. That's what I would write. Yes. Any other questions? All right. Jake and Dan Okay, so what you're gonna 